Hello, Homeworthy. I'm Natalia. Welcome to my Coral Gables home. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Hello, I am Natalia Millar, and we are in my Coral Gables home today. This is a historic home in Coral Gables, which is one of the neighborhoods around Miami. The house was built in 1926 by an architect called Robert Law Weed, and it is one of seven historic villages in Coral Gables. I've always loved the villages in Coral Gables and particularly liked the Italian village, which is where my house is. I bought the house three years ago and set out to renovate it and take it back to the most original version that it could be. So the house is in an architectural revival style, which was quite common in this part of Miami in the 1920s. This is an Italianate revival, so it's meant to look like classic Tuscan homes, and it has thick walls, textured finishes, um, asymmetrical layout, a really wonderful floor plan. It's got an L-shaped floor plan that makes it really fabulous for all of the rooms to have at least three walls with windows. So it's a really, it's a garden house. I've always said this is really a garden house and all of the rooms are oriented onto this wonderful side yard courtyard that I've created. When I first saw the house, I knew that it was a very special place. It was, uh, it looked actually great. The previous owners had a very colorful and fun interpretation of what the house should look like. And I could see past that and realize that I could put my own stamp on the house while keeping the authentic features, architectural features alive. Well, welcome to the entrance of my home. I always think an entrance should set the tone for what you're going to see in the house. So this is where I introduced the green color theme that you'll see in so many of the rooms. This is a wonderful um, original staircase uh, feature, which I love. And so all I did was refinish it and then added this wonderful jute runner um, in this really fabulous turquoise color. And then you also see some of the art pieces that I have here. Here on this wall, there's this wonderful work of art by a Cuban artist called Ariamna Contino. It's made with intricate layers of paper. And of course, it looks like a Miami, um, you know, palm leaf garden. So it was the perfect piece to have in the entrance um, to showcase what you're going to see in the rest of the house. So this wonderful plaster texture that you see on the walls is very typical of what you would have seen in a 1920s Mediterranean revival style home that was built in Coral Gables. You know, these wonderful European homes didn't have just a flat finish, not a drywall finish, it's a plaster finish. And this um, troweled plaster effect shows, kind of expresses the material, which I think is really great. And so I have that finish here in the entrance and in the living room. Um, and I think it just works really well. So in this entrance hall, this is where we have this wonderful terracotta floor. Um, I bought these, they're, they're contemporary Mexican terracotta tiles. My dad and I drove up to Palm Beach during the pandemic and found a little warehouse where they had them. But then there's a wonderful um, gentleman in Florida who refinishes using a type of motor oil to make them look like they've, they're 100 years old. And I'll show you the ones in the dining room later where you can see how great the finish match is. I love this door. Um, it's, you know, a wonderful timber panel door. Um, and I think it sets that tone for that old world, rustic uh, architecture that you see in the rest of the house. So follow me now into the living room. So this is the living room and it's the heart of the home. I don't believe that any room should be so formal that people are uncomfortable coming in and sitting down, whether they're wearing jeans or a cocktail dress. 
So I always make sure that I have lots of different textures in the fabric. I actually have a performance fabric on the sofa. It's pure fray, so it's fabulous. But it's very durable for all of the parties that I like to host. And here there's a combination of pieces, pieces that I've designed, like these coffee tables, which are part of my own furniture collection. And then, of course, the pretzel chairs, which are vintage, but I've recovered in this fantastic flame stitch fabric in the blues and greens shade. I think this is the first fabric that I chose for this house because I felt the color palette was just fit fantastic. And this is from Daydar. And another of the early purchases for this house was this wonderful canvas by a local artist, uh, Magna Sodamine. And it's um, this wonderful, expressive, deeply brush stroke, heavy uh, canvas that is of a botanic garden very close to where I grew up. So um, not only was it the color palette, but it was the subject, pal as the subject matter that connects very much to my own history in Florida and that is at the heart of this uh, wonderful room. So behind me is this wonderful fireplace, an original feature from the 1926 design by Robert Law Weed. Um, it's actually fantastic to have, and last Christmas uh, it was cool enough in Florida to have it on. But I love how it's on the corner of the room. It feels to me like all of these wonderful um, you know, uh, European rooms with a corner fireplace and it anchors the room. It also makes it a difficult room to furnish because it's quite asymmetrical. I've got two doors, two windows, another opening into the entrance and the fireplace. So it was, it was an interesting space to have to figure out how to furnish. I knew that I wanted to showcase this sofa. This is a sofa that I designed inspired by um, a David Hockney painting that I had seen at a show at the Tate Modern in London. And it was a portrait of these two men, very, you know, serious looking men in front of this fabulous pink velvet sofa. Um, and I saw it in the canvas and I said, what a sexy shape. I need to make a sofa like that. So this is my Hockney sofa. And I think it just fits perfectly um, against this very large window. And that kind of set the tone for the way I furnished the rest of the room. Um, but everything in here is a special piece. Um, this uh, wonderful ceramic basket. Uh, which I love, I bought in Paris years ago, and it looks like shark teeth, so it makes sense in Florida, but is actually ceramic. Um, and what I love is that I, I'm always buying when I'm traveling. I'm always trying, you know, I, I think any collector will tell you the same thing. You find beautiful things and you buy them. So I didn't actually buy anything in this room for this house except for some of the furniture. And um, all of the accessories were just things that I had been collecting over time and knew one day I would find the perfect place for them. And it's this house. And then this piece here, this is by this wonderful um, Venezuelan artist, a ceramicist called Reinaldo Sanguino. He works in a studio in New York. I'm obsessed with his work. I think he just has. Um, the, the, the play of colors, of density of the glazes, the touch of metallic. Every time I see one of his pieces, I fall in love. Um, so I'm a big fan. And the stool is from Reinaldo, and these two wonderful pieces that you see, the vase and the tray are also by him. And this, this, this particular vignette, this is, this is a composition that, again, um, happened quite organically. I purchased the mirror in Paris for another project thinking the client would love it. I showed it to them in the presentation. They didn't love it, so it ended up here. And then that client came for lunch a few months ago and said, I love the mirror. I said, I bought it for you, but now it's mine. Um, but yeah, so the mirror is from Paris. This is from a wonderful, wonderful place in Miami called Michel Contessa. He has just beautiful, one-of-a-kind pieces of furniture, and it's all the stuff that I love, and um, a vintage lamp. And this wonderful, wonderful side table. Um, I grew up in Mexico, and this is from Ago Projects in Mexico, a wonderful design gallery um, that I, I love to visit. And this, again, this combination of deeply textured timber with splatter painted brick, I think, is, is, is just very cool. And this piece is very special. And I have to say, I've been told, I was told by the, um, the antique dealer who sold it to me, I can never sell it. And I don't think I probably would. Um, but it's this wonderful travertine and jade screen. Again, I bought this before this house was even 
in my imagination. Um, I just saw it and I fell in love with it. It's been to London where I showed it um, at, a, at, a, at a wonderful room that I did there. And now it's here and it hides folding tables for parties. The decoration of the home is really meant to be an expression of my personal style. I like interiors that are deeply textured, that are layered with pieces of furniture from different styles of different materials of different compositions. So if anything, this house was meant to be an expression of what it is that I love about design. Um, for this house in particular, I used a color palette that I love, which is the combination of green and blue. And you'll see different variations of green and blue throughout the whole house. And, you know, as with everything, I think a home should tell the story of its, of its owner. I think your personal narrative should be showcased through the artwork, through the accessories, through the pieces that you have. And as this home is so personal, everything you see here is something that I've either acquired on my travels or has been a family gift or I've chosen because it makes sense in South Florida. It really is a very personal expression of how I like to live. When I moved into the house, I saw that there had been a lot of additions, a lot of additions in terms of moldings and millwork and baseboards and crown molding that just wasn't appropriate to the style of the house. So all I tried to do was to take the rooms back to what I thought they would have looked like in 1926. I've been collecting for a long time and obviously my sense of style evolves and pieces that I loved, I don't always love in the same way, but Funnily enough, at this point in my life, I feel like I've honed my taste enough so that the things that I buy, I end up really loving. And in this particular house, which I finished about three years ago, there's only one room that I'm still finessing, but the rest of them, I'm still as happy with the pieces that I put in uh, when, when I moved in um, as I am today. Um, but there's always room for something. Uh, for example, this wonderful work of art by a, a local Florida artist, Carlos Betancourt, is a beautiful piece that my parents gave me last year. And that's very special. And again, it looks like it was designed for this room with the turquoise and the blue. It just connects so beautifully with all the other pieces. Um, but again, I'm such a great believer if you buy what you love and you, and, you, and, you, and you see something like that screen, which was so special, I knew that I would have a place for it, whether it was for myself or if it was for a client who I love to source special pieces for. Um, I think that's, that's you know, one of the great things that one does as a designer. So one of the things that I think is so important when you buy a historic property is to try and maintain as much of the original features as possible. These floors, for the most part, are the original floors. Um, obviously, they've been repaired over the years. I had to do a little bit of, of repair in Florida. Obviously, you get things like termite damage. Um, but trying to keep to this original, you know, you know three-inch board that's quite thin, but I think works really well with the scale of the room. And then um, I designed this wonderful rug um, to pick up the lines, these kind of organic lines of the pretzel chairs and the Hockney sofa. Um, and this is one of the pieces that's in my, in my own collection. And I love the different play of heights in the pile. So you have the flatter um, wool, you know, wool, and then you have these kind of tufted bits. Um, again, I'm a huge fan of texture. I think that great character in interiors comes from playing with contrasting textures. The biggest challenge that I faced during the renovation project was just trying to get um, as much historical information as possible about what the house had been. I bought the house right at the beginning of COVID in March of 2020. And the reality was that it had been um, renovated by previous owners. So a lot of the electrical systems and the plumbing were upgraded. So my renovation could primarily be cosmetic. My professional journey was not that linear. But I think from when I was a child, I was probably always meant to be an architect. I've always loved homes. I've loved traveling and visiting those museums that were a house that was frozen in time. You know, whether it was the Newport mansions that I saw when I was at university or places I visited in Europe, I was always drawn to properties that told the story of the owners and of a time and of a place. And so after I graduated from college and I studied art history and architectural history and enjoyed that enormously because I do love history, I realized that I wanted to be more involved in a practical way and to practice architecture. So I went on to study architecture. I got my master's in that. And um, a few years after working here in South Florida, I moved to London and my career 
uh, shifted more into interiors and it's been incredibly rewarding. And so now I have the, a wonderful practice um, based primarily in London, but we're also based here where we get to do projects all over the world and we do everything from interior architecture to interior design, furniture sourcing, product. Um, it's a dream come true. So from the living room, the perfect room to see next is the dining room. So let me show you. So this is one of my favorite rooms in the house. It's the dining room. And the main defining feature in this space is the wallpaper. This is my Ambia wallpaper, a wallpaper that I designed in collaboration with Fromental. And I had been commissioned in London to design a Cuban inspired room based on my Cuban heritage. And um, I was inspired by the work of a wonderful Cuban master, Wifredo Lam. And I designed this you know, wonderful, wonderful um, wallpaper, wall covering, because it, it really is a work of art. And um, all the panels are custom made for each room, and they're really special. I created the color tones and the, um, the textures from using different semi-precious stones. And you can see the depth of texture when you get close up. But this wonderful room is where I love hosting uh, lots of dinner parties, uh, you know, actually parties, uh, big cocktail parties, all sorts of parties, and the double height space certainly lends itself to having a dramatic, um, a dramatic room. So I had an animal theme also in this house. I have a lot of kids visiting me, my niece and my nephews. I love them all very much. And I have a game where I say, go and photograph all the animals in the room. And that entertains them for about 45 minutes, which I think is a good, is a good start. But um, so Daphne the giraffe lives here in the dining room. And uh, throughout the house, you'll see other animals. Um, wonderful works of art, again, mostly Cuban artists. This is Rafael Domenech, and that's Moises Finale. And um, these are all just really special pieces because they're um, artists I've known, artists that have been in, in um, my, my parents' collection as well. So it's nice to, to have pieces that remind you of home. Um, and then uh, over here on this side of the dining room, I have these two wonderful cabinets, uh, brutalist inspired cabinets, uh, which are, are great. And again, more, more ceramics and more special pieces that I bought in Paris. I think Paris is one of the greatest places that uh, you know, a designer can go to source beautiful pieces um, from these you know, random plant people, uh, chandeliers to more work by this wonderful ceramicist um, that I love. So, this dining room is comfortable for eight, but in a pinch I can squeeze nine. Um, but it's also wonderful during Christmas. I set up a really big tree and I have lots of buffets on the table. So, um, and, the, and it has doors that open to both sides of, of the garden. Uh, so it really is, this room ends up being the heart of the home in many ways. I think homes are for living. And for me, nothing is nicer than having a house full of people. So when I entertain, I love to cook. I do the cooking myself. And I love to make things that I could make in advance. I often make lots of salads or a great dish like um, you know, duck confit or a wonderful, a wonderful puttanesca fish. Always great wines and a cocktail for dessert. I love a liquid dessert, like an espresso martini or a Campari cake with a little shot of Negroni on the side. So this is a really interesting room because this was not originally an enclosed room. The house uh, from 1926 would have ended here and have a caretaker's um, cottage and a garage on the other side. So this was an open air loggia, um, which was enclosed by previous owners. Um, and this floor, which you can see is quite, this is the old terracotta I was talking about before. It's undulating and shows this age, would have originally been an exterior floor. Um, so I think this room has a lot of character. And you can see, if you look up at the ceilings, um, the original uh, you know, uh, uh, wooden ceiling, which I've painted black, and then designed this uh, pendant light, which is asymmetrical because the room is actually not symmetrical. One side of the ceiling is longer than the other. So it's a bit of a trick to make sure that the pendant is centered over the dining table, but also works when you look up at the ceiling. My favorite architectural feature of this home has to be the layout. It is so clever the way uh, Robert Law Weed, uh, first of all, sites, you know, put the house on the site. 
even in the in the in the hot humid florida summers there's always a breeze in this house there's always uh, all the rooms have cross ventilation it's incredibly incredibly clever um, the thickness of the walls mean that the house stays cool in the summer and warmer in the winter uh, not that it ever gets very very uh, cold in south florida in the winter but it's just it I'm, I'm always amazed by architects who were working without all of the benefits of technology and climate control that architects today that we work with um, to see that clever design um, is still relevant today. It's really difficult to say what my favorite piece in the house is because I love so many of them. Um, I have a wonderful gi giraffe sculpture in the dining room, a, a copper and brass giraffe by a Mexican artist called Sergio Bustamante. I grew up with his pieces in Mexico where I was born and raised by my parents. Um, and to have one of his amazing pieces, I think that's pretty special. Uh, I also love um, a, a, a ceramicist based in New York, a Venezuelan ceramicist, Reynaldo Sanguino. I've been collecting his pieces for a number of years after first finding him in Design Miami. And I have probably five or six pieces of his here in my house. Um, so I wouldn't part with those. So from this wonderful dining room, I'd love to show you the outside, the side yard of the house, which is an outdoor living room, which is where we spend all our time in South Florida. This is an outdoor living room. In South Florida, we live outside. Well, practically you're around except in the summer when it's very hot. So I really wanted this room, this outdoor room, to have furniture that felt like living room furniture. So you can see the seating area. I'll show you over here. It's deeply um, cushioned, upholstery, wonderful. Um, you know, the same attention to detail in the fabrics that we used in the outside, in the inside we used on the outside. Lots of textures, patterns and colors. And of course, vintage pieces of ceramic on the coffee tables as well. So when I moved into this house in March of 2020, the garden had so many different types of plants. And I thought it's not a huge garden, so it needed a bit more, um, it needed to be rationalized. And I decided to plant a garden of just Florida natives that would grow quickly. Um, they would be in various shades of green. I love the shade of green. I love gardens that have lots of different colors of green in, in a concentrated space. So we planted things like silver buttonwood, caper berries, a, a, a rum tree, um, just these wonderful Florida native plants. And they have grown so much in three years. I think the garden has almost doubled in size. Now, one concession that I made to the Italianate history of the house is planting olive trees. Um, we have two olive trees in the house and these wonderful bronze pots from Bronzino that are really beautiful. But the rest of the plants are Florida natives. So as I mentioned before, I'm a huge believer in contextual design. And the flooring here is a Coralina, a limestone, a very typical Oolitic limestone that you would find in Florida. It's what most of the houses in Coral Gables were built from. And what I love about this particular material is that it really ages so beautifully. I actually love it when it's aged and you get all of these little green mosses and plants growing in it and it has so much character. And really by putting in this wonderful Coralina floor that unifies this space, I created an outdoor room. I split my time between London and, and, and this home in Miami. I spend probably most of my time in London and uh, Probably about a third of my time is traveling. We have projects in Mexico, in Colorado, in Spain, in London, in Switzerland. Um, I keep myself busy. Let's head back inside and you can see how we brought the feeling of outdoors in. So this is what we call a Florida room. <laughs> it's a family room, television room, just general hangout room. Um, in my house, it's called the kids' room. It's the kid-friendly room um, where all of the fabrics are pretty durable and it's cozy and it's great for watching um, television and movies. I put a, when, during Christmas, I set up a kid's Christmas tree in here. So I love that the kids in my life love to come into the house and say, can we go to the kids' room? It's also the kids' room because I put a lot of animals in here. I have a bronze dinosaur, a rhinoceros, and um, some of the artwork has great little um, animal figures as well. 
And as always, in my rooms, there are lots of interesting works of art that I've bought over the years um, from different artists, from Bedia to a wonderful artist called Lidia Rubio. And I particularly love this wonderful, wonderful bell um, uh, by, uh, that I bought in Design Miami a few years ago. It's uh, from the Frank Lloyd Wright School of Design. And I just think this incredible patinaed copper is the perfect color tone in my house. This is a, probably the most casual room in the house. Again, I just thought this was an easy place for hanging out, for watching television. Um, I love the playful cactus lamps. I think they talk a little bit about the relaxed nature of this room. It's just cozy, easy, um, uh, with beautiful textures, um, but it's not very precious, which is nice. Now this room, the Florida room, is part of what was originally the caretaker's cottage. And what I've created is a little guest suite. So when I have guests, they stay in the bedroom next door, which I'll show you. But of course, um, this room is also their television relaxing room. And so my guests and I can have separate spaces for total privacy. So of course, with these old houses, you work with the quirks and you find charm in them. Um, this vestibule is right off the dining room and I painted it this very deep shade of bottle green because I thought it was the perfect foil to the dining room. And this is um, that caretaker's cottage that is now the guest suite with a Florida room, a bathroom, and then the bedroom. And I really maximized um, the green in these rooms. Um, this particular guest room, which I absolutely love, has this wonderful, uh, soft green uh, wallpaper and I think this might just be my favorite fabric in the whole house. It's a Zach and Fox in all of these wonderful shades of green and then uh, all of the cushions which are a bit of a signature in our projects to use mismatching patterns and, and hopefully find rhythm in, in um, connecting um, different styles but within the same color. So this is a cozy guest room uh, which I think uh, definitely feels like you've brought the outdoors of South Florida inside. I think it's so important to make your guests feel at home when they're coming over to stay. I always try and make sure that, the, that I've slept in the room, that I've tested the linens, that I've tested the quality of the bed, that I make sure there's enough lighting in the room. I put a little desk because I know these days people like to work in their rooms when they're traveling, so I make sure that, that that's all, all uh, comfortable for anything that my guests can do. Obviously, we always have a jug of water, lots of freshly laundered towels, um, and just climate control. So this, uh, this whole side of the house has its own air conditioning so that my guests can feel at home to have whatever temperature they're happy with. So from the guest room, I'd love to show you the guest bathroom because it's another symphony of green. I had the most incredible tiles custom made in Portugal. We sent them all of these color swatches um, so that they would get the perfect shade of green. And you can see in here, I love working with dark colors and I think there's something really wonderful about the contrast between a dark room followed by a light room. Um, it's something that I've always liked to play with in my career and I just thought this bathroom with these brilliantly emerald green tiles and the wonderful green marble on the floor and on the, and on the vanity, I just thought a dark green wall would look incredible. Um, I think people are scared of dark colors and ironically every time I do a dark color room it ends up being somebody's favorite. So um, as long as you have the right foil, um, you know, a bit of wonderful artwork and, and beautiful accessories that keep it from feeling oppressive, a dark room can be the most glamorous and cozy place that you can be. I'm inspired by so many things. I think um, I find inspiration every day and everywhere in, in, in nature, in the colors in nature, when I travel in art and architecture. But the inspiration for this house was very much that it be a family house. And it's a house where I want um, all of my friends and family to come. I entertain all the time. I host kids parties, grown up parties, cocktail parties, you name it. Um, it's really a home for living. Let's go see the rest of the house. So on the other side of the entrance hall is the kitchen. Come and have a look. So the kitchen is a very big space in this house. It's um, 
the previous owners had converted the original dining room, butler's pantry and kitchen into this very large um, space. And actually it works really, really well. Um, I'm a huge fan of kitchens that don't feel like a kitchen, that don't feel industrial, but actually feel like another room that happens to be a kitchen. So when I designed um, the kitchen for my house, instead of having um, upper height cabinets, I put these wonderful brass shelves where I could showcase more of my personal art collection. All of the accessories that you see on the counters are ceramics, marble pieces, pieces that I've collected over a number of years in my travels. And I think it just creates this really cozy room um, that happens to be a kitchen. So I love, as I've said, I love collecting pieces when I travel. I have been known many times to have to buy a suitcase or a duffel bag to bring all of the extra pieces that I've bought while I'm traveling. Um, this is a recent find. I've been working um, on a project in Los Cabos in Mexico, and I went to see this wonderful um, ceramic uh, school. And this piece is by one of the um, artisans there, and I just think it has such cool... Uh, texture and color glazes um, so it's a lot of fun and it I think there's a nice dialogue between this work of art and and, and the um, and the feel of this ceramic here these are wonderful woven baskets that I brought from London from a great gallery that I've worked with for many years called the new craftsman and then this area over here um, because I had so much space in the kitchen I have this enormous a uh, 16 foot island and room for six to have dinner or breakfast here. I thought what I really needed on this side of the house was a cocktail area. This is my cocktail lounge area and um, lots of um, fun evenings uh, trying, uh, you know, chatting with friends and having a good time um, in this area. My dog and my mom's dog also love sitting on this sofa, which we, which we love. So in the kitchen, one of my favorite uh, pieces of furniture is the bar cabinet. And um, I brought this with me from London. And what I love is inviting my guests to come and choose their favorite glass and make their favorite cocktail. Um, and here you can see a collection of pieces, like all of these different, all of this glassware has come either from Venice. These were my grandmother's. These belong to my parents. Um, they're all just really special. And I think all of those little touches, all of those different pieces that you've bought over the years, that you bought on a trip or on a beach in Mexico, which I've done, and didn't know what to do, you can find a home in a bar cabinet and display it beautifully and have a fun um, activity for your guests when they come over. So one of the main features in this kitchen is this 16 by four foot island. It's just enormous. And it's only two pieces of stone. It's this wonderful Spanish soapstone with this leathered finish that I loved. It took 20 men to get each of the two pieces um, through the doors. I don't think they were very happy that day. But the result is this wonderful island. I'm not a fan of open kitchens. Uh, which is, is uh, con con contrary to what a lot of designers love. I actually like quite formal entertaining. Um, but because this kitchen was open when I bought it, um, I had to find the best way of making it work. And I think by making it feel like a room with an extension of the art collection, an extension of the accessories and all the other pieces, it works really well. So as you'll see throughout the house, all of the flower arrangements in the house are Florida natives. I go out to my garden and I cut what I have. Um, this is just some wonderful, uh, you know, flower from a from a palm leaf. These are big bananas that I buy at the at the at the juice stand on Eighth Street. And then we make an awful lot of fried plantains after we <laughs> we use all of the centerpieces. But again, this goes back to my love of contextual design. I think floral arrangements should be contextual. I think the house would look so strange with a bunch of peonies here or, or old fashioned English roses. I think um, the more you can continue the theme of context, the more appropriate a design feels. 
Now, I, as I mentioned, I love to cook, and unfortunately, I don't have all the time in the world that I like to cook, but when I'm here in Miami, I love using this wonderful range. It's actually one of the things that I kept from the previous owners. It was just the focal piece of the kitchen, and it works really well. I had this plaster-in hood made. It kind of has that Italianate feel that I think is appropriate to the architecture. Um, and it's really wonderful. I mean, recently I had a, a dinner party and I had a huge paella dish and I made a cacciuccio, this Italian dish where you put lots of shellfish. I think I mispronounced that, so someone will tell me if I did. But lots of shellfish and a wonderful sauce and it's a dish that you serve in two courses. First the shellfish and then you toss the sauce with pasta. So that was a big hit. I'd love to show you the, the powder room, which is one of my favorite rooms in the house. So this room is all about the stone. Uh, this is Amazonite, a stone that I absolutely love. And it was one of the first things I decided that I had to have in this house when I was designing it. So designed the, the wonderful uh, vanity and then found this incredible textured wallpaper, which has the same turquoise color. And I think the composition of the textured wallpaper, the Amazonite stone, the vintage Murano wall lights, I think it just works perfectly together. A home has a soul when it tells the story of its owner. And for me, this is, it begins with telling your personal narrative. So all of the furniture, all of the art, all of the pieces that you have should be pieces that you love, pieces that you've collected over time, pieces that you buy when you travel or you find at a wonderful vintage so shop or something that came from, from your family. And in addition to that, for me, something that's very important is that design be contextual. This is very much a design for a Florida home. I have materials like rattan and linen and raffia and all of these materials which feel very appropriate to South Florida. Um, for me, when the interior is incongruous with the landscape and the climate of a place, it just doesn't make sense. I'd love to show you my bedroom. It is one of my favorite rooms in the house. I think that a master bedroom should be a sanctuary. It should have a warm color palette, something really soft and serene that makes you feel cocooned at the end of the day. For me, that color is blue. I love blue. It's one of my favorite colors. And you can see here I use this wonderful turquoise jute. It's um, from Philip Jeffries. It has a really knobbly texture. And even though the shade is quite vibrant, the application in this room, I think from the textures and from all of the other soft tonal fabrics, feels really calm and really soothing. The bedside tables I designed, they have this wonderful um, faux tur turquoise finish that I think works really well. And then just a combination of some of my favorite fabrics. Um, this wonderful fabric on the bed, which is also by Pierre Frey, has this like little line of blue inside. You can barely see it, but it just picks up perfectly with the shades of the wallpaper. And then, of course, everywhere you see different pieces of ceramic, vintage mirrors that I've had for years and repainted white for this room. So as I said, as long as you're collecting over the years, you can always find something wonderful for a little corner of the house that you didn't know you had the perfect piece for. I do feel that all rooms should have artwork, especially bedrooms. And I found these really fun little plaster molds. My sister-in-law says that they look like little thoughts, little thought bubbles of my dreams in the middle of the night. Um, but they're really charming, and I do love art that has a three-dimensional quality. On this wall, you can see this wonderful vintage piece um, made of yarn, uh, which I also found in a vintage store here in Florida in Miami and I just thought it worked perfectly to bring in that textured, warm, cozy look for a bedroom. So these works of art are really fun. They're by a local artist called Vicky Pierre and I love the quality. I love using black as a color in design. People are scared of the color black but I think that this artwork shows that the color black can be feminine, playful, whimsical and just really the perfect foil for a tonal bedroom like this one. So the window treatments in this house are hugely important because it can get really sunny in South Florida. And I really love working with um, Robert Laweed's concept of having cross ventilation in rooms that can be ventilated even without using air conditioning, which I try and do in the winter months. 
Um, but here I use these wonderful um, woven shades in this cocoa color and they go all the way down so if the light is really bright you can have that protection from the sun but they're also transparent enough that you can still see a hint of green you can still see the greenery beyond which was so important because every single one of the color schemes in this house was designed with a view to how the composition would look with a view out the windows and the amount of green that you see beyond that's always really important when you're designing a room to look at not the room not just the room internally but what the context it's sitting against and how those colors play together. And then, of course, I, I do love wonderful curtains. I think that they make or break a room. There's nothing worse for me than flimsy, thin, <laughs> badly, badly done curtains. And these just have this wonderful textured woven fabric. And layered with the woven blinds, they just create a really sumptuous, cozy feel for the bedroom. And on the other side of this floor is my study. Let's go have a look. So this is my study and it's, I keep saying this, but probably one of my favorite rooms in the house. Uh, when I was first thinking of how to use this house, I had originally thought that my study would be down where the Florida room is. And my brother actually said, this is the best room in the house because it has the view all the way through the garden and you should use um, that room to be the room you're going to be in the most, which is my, my study, my office. Um, so it's a wonderful room. It also doubles as a TV room, a cozy little snug. It's where I work every day. It's where I do all of my um, uh, Zoom calls when I'm in Miami. And uh, it's just a very, very, very cozy room. I'm not a great fan of carpeted rooms. But this floor had been ruined by termites. So um, it, carpet was just a, a, a quick solution when I was trying to move in. And actually, it does give it quite a cozy feel. I picked a carpet that looks like a sweater. And then, of course, a wonderful collection of books, books that I've been collecting for years, some of them back from <laughs> my university days a long time ago. So it's nice to have a place to showcase. And then these wonderful bookshelves by my friend Tyson in London also have little animals, as you can see. So there's a little lizard over there, and there's a bird up there. So that is more of the 18 animals throughout the house that I love to task my kid visitors with photographing when they come for a visit. So these fun little pieces of furniture were used for my dolls when I was a little kid. Um, they're Mexican and my mom bought them in a market in Mexico and when my parents were moving out of their house they found them in a box. And I thought they looked so charming as little accessories <laughs> on my bookshelf. I thought what more appropriate uh, accessory for a designer to have than they look like little model furniture, little pieces of model furniture. And so, and of course, a collection of ceramics. I'm obsessed with ceramics, as you've gathered from the tour of this house. Um, so lots of different pieces uh, on, the, on the shelf. And it's always evolving and changing. I use them for floral displays, and then I move them from room to room. I think a house should always have an organic quality. You shouldn't be too rigid about what you have, and you should be moving pieces around and living every day with the ones you love best. So I love uh, a chaise. I love them. They're so cozy. This one is comfortable for two people, which was important for me for my television room. This actually doubles as the sitting room for the, my bedroom, for the main bedroom up here on this level. So I designed this in two-tone fabric so that it wouldn't be too oppressive all in one. And it's just super cozy. And then, of course, I have a wonderful view of the garden beyond. So when, I, you, when I'm painting a room, when I'm decorating a room, I really love it when the color on the walls continues onto the ceiling. Here it obviously made a lot of sense because there's a bit of a, a, a dome to the ceiling. Um, and so I used this wonderful color, this strong green from Farrow and Ball, and painted it um, on the walls and on the ceiling. And again, I just think it visually elevates um, the ceiling heights uh, to do that. The word home to me means comfort and glamour and family. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.